Today, I'm going to force my editor to design a new Gao logo reveal in 15 minutes, but also in one hour, so you could see the difference in what you can create in a time crunch. And I'll be there as your tip fairy, giving you editing tips along the way. Let's, Let's jump, jump on, on in. All right, Jiva, are you ready for the challenge? Yes. Go! Wait, what do you want me to do again? Well, I need a new logo reveal because our old one doesn't have our updated logo with the rounded corners. Yeah, sure, I'm ready. All right, do you have any plans? My only plan now is probably to use Premiere for the 15 minute version and After Effects for the one hour one because After Effects, it just takes up too much time for me. I, I get lost in that program way too much. Don't worry, take your time. Jiva, the time is a ticking. So what I have envisioned is the Premiere Pro logo coming up from the bottom or spinning up and then it transform into Gal's logo. And that's all I've got. So everything else, I'm just gonna wing it. Whee! My first time-saving tip is to use project templates like Jiva did. He has the Gal template here open, which already has things like the sound effects, branding elements, adjustment layers, all ready to go. To create a template, all you have to do is create an empty project and then import everything that you need, create the bins and all of that inside the project panel, then go up to file and save as template. Okay, I got the Premiere Pro logo in the timeline and I think Gao's logo can come in right about here, like right after one second. I'll add a mask to get rid of the text in the middle and we'll duplicate this layer and on the top one, will invert the mass here so we only get the text. I kind of want the outline of the logo to extend out from the side forming like the square shape. So I guess let's create a mass and start animating. The next tip I have for you is to be realistic with your time, right? Do the things that you know you can do within the given deadline. What Chief is about to do is gonna take a lot more time than he thinks. This would have been so much easier in After Effects. I just realized I can't even ease the keyframe, so I just gotta dish this idea. If you're in a time crunch, choose a simpler idea that you're confident with. The key is to spend more time making simple things look good. So instead, I'm gonna have this Premiere Pro logo turn into the outline since the shape already matches anyway, and right after, we'll have the letter pop up one by one. I don't have time to animate the letters, so instead, I'll just have it like glow up a little bit as it pops up. Using Premiere's glow effect on one layer with one solid color is a bit tricky. What Jeeva's doing instead is a fake glow. What's that you say? Duplicate the layer and change the blending mode to linear dodge and add a bit of Gaussian blur to it. Lower the opacity to make it less bright and now hold the control or command plus shift while selecting the end of all of these layers and simply press shift plus D to create a quick fade to all of them. The text pop up is looking nice, but I'm running out of time and I haven't even animated the rest yet. So psst, gotta lock in. Let's nest everything, add the transform effects. So I can, yeah, I can animate it to come up from the bottom. As it comes up, I want it to spin. And in Premiere, we got this effect called basic 3D. It's pretty good for faking like 3D spins and stuff. I can animate it here. The next tip is to know your keyboard shortcuts. I have a shortcut to quickly make keyframes ease in and out. I set it to my F5 and 6 keys on the keyboard because they're literally purple. <laughs> Remembering all the default Premiere Pro shortcuts comes in handy, especially if you have the Premiere Gap keyboard. But also if you add your own custom ones, it's quite useful as well. For example, easing the keyframes on an animation is a great way to make your animation more smooth, but there's no default mm -hmm. shortcut for ease in and ease out so you can make your own. So if you just spend a little bit of your free time thinking about the tools and effects that you use often that don't have default keyboard shortcuts, you can create them really fast and ultimately save you more time in the long run. To make this animation look nicer, I think we need motion blur, but bumping up the shutter speed in the transform effect here won't affect my 3D spin. So a quick workaround here would be using the directional blur effect. Instead, you can change the direction keyframe the length to go to zero as the spinning stops. Yeah, there we go. 
Okay, time's almost up. I added a quick pop-up animation here. Also use the same fake glow method. So the logo glows up and also pops up as it switches. What I need now is just the background. This next tip is about having your recurring assets library handy. So if you use a lot of stock footage or you have a lot of assets that you use often, you can have open that shared drive. For example, if you use Dropbox or Lucidlink or if you use an external drive, have that ready and open to use. But better yet, you can use Otlist extension where you can search for footage, sound effects, and more directly in their panel. And when you go to download, it'll import directly into your project panel. So utilizing extensions like Otlist and saving your recurring assets to a shared drive will save you a lot of time. Lots of good background here, but I kind of want one that feels like it's interacting with my animation. Remember to be coherent, right? For example, he picked stock footage where there's light shining from the middle. So after he got it all synced up, it looked like the lights were shooting out from the logo. So this tip works with all aspects of your project. If each element, animation and sound, all work together, it's overall going to look a lot better. All right, Jiva, it's been 15 minutes. Are you done? Yeah, yeah, I just finished adding sound effects. Uh, you wanna watch it now? Actually, I wanna hold to see both of them at the end. Are you ready to start the one hour version? Yeah. Sweet. Let's set the 60 minute timer. Good luck. Okay, guess I'm starting. I need a better plan this time. No more wasting time on things that I'm gonna give up later. While Jiva is planning his moves, how about I try to make my own intro logo reveal in five minutes or less? It seems pretty impossible, right? But not if I use templates from Artlist, which is the sponsor of today's video. So here on Artlist, I can find professionally made templates for After Effects, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and more. I think I'm digging this atmospheric logo reveal. So let's download it. So let's go ahead and open up the template in After Effects. And if you're new to templates, the best place to start is by going to the project panel. And here you'll usually find placeholder compositions for us to go into and add our own text and logo. Then there's also a control comp and inside of it, there's a layer with all of the main controls, such as changing the camera movements. Let's also make my logo 3D and let's change up the colors to match my brand. And it hasn't even been five minutes. Let's use the rest of the time to generate some backgrounds using their new AI image and video generator. So here we can generate an image from a prompt. And once that's done, we can turn it into a video or even use our own image. Here, Artlist even suggested a prompt for us to try. Let's see how it looks. It looked pretty good. I encourage you to watch the full video we made about Artlist AI image and video generation. Yeah, and I'll put a link to that video in the end screen of this video. The best part is, is that you can try out Artlist AI image and video generator for free to start. There is so much that Artlist has to offer. In fact, all of the sound effects, music, and stock footage used in this video is from Artlist. So give it a try for yourself using my link below. And now let's check in to see how Jiva is doing. Yeah, this is looking great. It's been like five minutes and I just have this vague idea. I know definitely that I want to use the 3D camera and I also want to have a transition at the end to go back into the video since I didn't really have time to do it in the last version. I've got the initial setup out of the way. So here one layer with just the outlines and I also one layer each for each letter, so I can easily animate them separately later. And it's important to always name your layers. This will save you time and avoid confusion later on. It's very simple, just select the layer, press the enter key, and then change the name to what you like. You can click on the layer names tab to toggle between the source original and the new edited name. I'm making this outline layer 3D, and then also let's duplicate it a few times and we'll move each of them backwards in 3D space. I'm trying to create like a tunnel so I can have my 3D camera here fly in it or like fly out of it. Yeah, here we go. Let's add a fill effect to each of these outline layers so I can change the colors. This is a free plugin called FX Console. And in my opinion, it's a must have for After Effects users. With a layer selected, you can press a shortcut on your keyboard to quickly search and add any effects to that layer. You could also assign your most used effects to this bar down here for even quicker access. Okay, I just finished animating these letters jumping up and the animation is looking a bit stiff. This is where having more time is super helpful. 
helpful because here I can jump into the graph editor and manually adjust these curves so I can get the animation speed exactly how I want. A quick tip for me is to switch this to the speed graph so we can just focus on the speed of the animation. So here the higher the line is, the faster it goes. So yeah, let's start tweaking. Well, doesn't this look lovely? To finish this animation, Jeeva is going to use the track mat which is quite useful. Basically, he created a solid layer and placed it right under the text. Then he picked the three text layers and track matted it to the solid layer. The solid layer is now automatically hidden, but the text layers will only appear in the area the solid is at. We can press here to invert the mat. So now the two letters animating up will only appear right under the letter. G. The track mat pretty much lets you use one layer as a mask for multiple layers, keeping it simple. I'm done with the main parts. Now for the end, I want the camera to like fly back in so we can use the outline as like a portal to transition into the actual video. This is looking pretty good, but I need this text to get out of the way first. And a great way to do that is using a null layer. Once created, it just looks like an empty layer. But what we can do is select the three text layers and parent it to the null. Now, if we move the null layer around, it will affect all three letters. So now Jiva can now add keyframes to the null and animate the whole text to move down. This is a great way to quickly animate multiple layers in one go. So for this transition, I place a white solid layer at the exact same spot as where my logo is in the 3D space. And I also keyframe a mask to appear in the area of the logo as the camera flies in. So with this setup, I can add in a background layer, then we can track mat it like before. I'll track mat this background to the solid layer. Yeah, so as the camera flies in, you can see the middle of the background layer automatically gets cut out, creating this portal so we can use it as a transition. Also with this setup, it means I can switch around my background as much as I want. Maybe the client wants to change the background Maybe Gao's not happy with this background. I can just switch it around, track matter to the solid, and all my portal and all the anime, everything would just be intact, you know? Big brain. Yes, a big brain indeed. But you know what's even more of a big brain? Using expressions, of course. Here are some useful expressions that Jiva used. On the position parameter of that layer, hold Alt or Option and press the stopwatch icon to open up the expression box. Now here he uses the wiggle expression. The first number is the frequency of the wiggle followed by the amount. So this will make the logo move around no more than five times per second, but no more than three. No, I actually liked it more when it was steady. Let's delete this. Oh, well, I guess he's not using that after all. Well, the other expression he uses is on the noise layer. So this layer, when placed on top of everything else, is clearly too short. So what he did was right click on it and enabled time remapping. Once the parameter shows up, he added this loop out cycle expression to make the noise footage continuously loop. And as you can see, he can drag out this layer as long as he wants. For some finishing touches, I'm gonna turn on motion blur on all the layers. I mean, <laughs> this is definitely my favorite part of After Effects, just being able to get motion blur on everything. I think I'm done here with time to spare. Wait, I forgot to add sound effects. All right, Jiva, time's up. Okay, okay, I'm done, I'm done. Let's take a look in your edits. Let's jump on in. So first off, how do sounds become in your edits? Let's jump on in. So first off, how do sounds become pop? All right. What do you think? Well, I love that you kept them both short, but I do prefer the one hour version, mainly because of the nice color gradients that you had with the in animation and the masking out animations. So you like see my talking head in the outro. I like that you tailored it for our videos. I actually prefer the 15 minute version. Oops, I said it. Thanks so much, Jiva. Well, there you go, you guys. If you wanna learn some more tips on how to edit faster, you can check out this video right here. Don't forget to stay creative. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Woo!